Welcome to RVing in New England, the nation's only forum that puts you on stage with some of the biggest names in the RV industry. And now your hosts, John DiPietro and Bob Zagami. And hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of RV in New England. We've got a great show lined up tonight. We've got so many things to talk about, Bob. We, we really want to account. First of all, we should tell our audience that this show is brought to you by Lee's RV and Auto Ranch. And they're in nearby Ellington, Connecticut. They've got everything. Look at they got a new ad for us tonight. They got teardrop campers they got new class bees they've got everything imaginable and the best part about dealing with lees is that they are locally owned they're family owned and they're polite friendly people and um, they're also rvers in fact our friend brian just got back from a um, long rv trip and um, we want to welcome them tonight and certainly welcome our audience as well, where we had a little bit of a hiccup last week. Hey, one time out of 300 shows. But I, in, in full disclosure, it was self-inflicted. I did something stupid, so I was responsible. It was not StreamYard. Uh, they they maintain their their record, but uh, I think we even I think we even made the show better. If we had done it last week, I think we did it even better this right. week with what we have. We we have a ton of stuff to cover. Right. And also, in full disclosure, it was his fault. Right. I didn't do anything wrong. Nope. In fact, I was the one who noticed that we weren't on. That's right. <laughs> anyway. Doesn't hey, Doesn't matter. Doesn't You know what? what? We're not. We're not. We're not live. Oh, really? I've got fire behind us, and we've got fire in our eyes, and we've got everything to um, make your RVing more fun. And Bob, we had a very um, special day today talk a little bit about well let me, let me set it up and then you can play the video okay okay um you have to be living under a rock to not realize that the rv industry has been experiencing explosive phenomenal amazing growth for the past two or three years and one of the biggest issues that everybody has experienced in the rv industry is there are not enough people to fill the jobs to um, do the work that needs to be done, whether it's from the manufacturer's end, whether it's from the dealer's end, whether it's from the service end at the dealership, whatever, but people need help. So right here in central Massachusetts, I was familiar with the Worcester County Sheriff, Lou Evangelitis, and they do great things there for the inmates, and they put these programs together so their chances of coming back, of being a repeat customer. You know, if you go to a Marriott, they want you back in a week. If you go to a restaurant, they want you back in a week. If you're in prison for any reason, they don't want you back. And the way to keep people from coming back is to get them a job. So, Bob, why don't you pick it up from there? Yeah, you know, this is probably one of the most impressive uh, correction facilities that I've been in. It was spotless. The people were polite. They they go out of their way for the uh, inmates. They, they provide them mental health services, all kinds of dental. They have a dental office. They've got doctors. Uh, they got various training programs. And we've been fortunate to team up with the RV Technical Institute. And we just graduated our first class today of four uh, inmates who... I think I've got a picture of them. Boom. There we are. There's the, the graduating class on the far right-hand side. Most of you know Chris Doherty from Doherty Consulting. Next to him is Kurt Hemmler going right to left. Then the sheriff. A uh, couple more inmates. It's me stuck in the back. And uh, Lisa Gobi, who is one of the administrators. And that's DePetro way over on the left-hand side. So they were excited. They had a great time. But let me show you some of John's handiwork during the day. Hey everybody, it's RVing in New England and we are with the people that make RV in New RVing in New England so special from 
this man, who's Bob Zagami, the executive director, to Sheriff Lou Evangelitis. And we're going to talk to him in a second and Kurt Hemmler from the RVTI. Mr. Zagami, tell us uh, why we're here at the sheriff's office, and uh, it's a very momentous occasion. Well, we had a ceremony this morning uh, graduating four students who are trained in level one certification. Uh, they will be testing out this week from the RV Technical Institute. We worked the program out with Kurt Hemmler and with the po folks here at the sheriff's department and uh, couldn't be happier with the result and putting these people into a position of having a career, not a job, but a career in the RV industry. Great. And Kurt, um, having this program really kind of sets the tone for what can happen nationally, right? Oh, for sure. I mean, thanks to the sheriff and to all the folks that were involved in putting this together, um, it can become a signature program across the country, all starting right here at Worcester. Right. And Sheriff Evangelitis, um, you opened your doors mm -hmm. to the RVing education community and uh, your people really seem to embrace mm -hmm. it. It's got to be special for you. Well, it is. I mean, having Kurt and Bob here with us today, I mean, we've always believed here this is to be a true house of correction and the best social program in the world is a job. And the RV industry has as many good paying jobs as any industry out there. So we're blessed to have them partner with us to really make us a prototype uh, in a facility like this to train people who are going to create and have the skills. And we had our first graduation today for these guys are graduating with the skills to get out and work in the RV industry, making themselves fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year annually, providing for their family, giving themselves dignity, and making our world a better place. That's what it's about, and I'm so grateful for their partnership. Right, and we have one of the best instructors in the country, and Chris Doherty, and um, Kurt. Um, national, I say, go national with this. Mm -hmm. Well, as far as nationally, definitely, it can all start right here. Um, Four students might seem like a small population, but seeing their faces, knowing what their potential is now, and it all starting right here, uh, mm -hmm. definitely can be mimicked across the country. And Bob, as far as your dealers are concerned, they all need help, don't they? Every one of them. 35 dealers in six New England states, and every one of them could hire new technicians tomorrow. Sheriff, final words. I just said, as we talked to our graduates, their futures are unwritten. They have been provided the skills and the abilities now to go out and have a great life. And that's what we want for them, because if they win, we all win. Hey, everybody. There you go. Great. They want to hear it again, Bob. Huh? Yeah. They want to hear it again. Well, uh, do we have any fans tonight? Look at it. We're working. So we're on hit all, all cylinders tonight. We got the program working. We got... Fans in the stands. We got videos. We got a video we're done. Gonna, we're going to bring our first guest on in about two minutes here. Uh, so what do we got? Jerry, Jerry Plant from Cape Cod. Jim Roy from Silver Moose up in the woods. Monica's with us again. Bernie Colleton. And uh, speaking about Bernie Colleton. Uh, next week. Next week, Bernie's going to be hosting our being in New England. His first solo gig. I, I don't know. I don't even know what he's going to talk about or. If he's going to have somebody else come on with him, but we'll get that information later. But uh, Bernie, are you all excited about uh, getting up to the big stage next week? Jim Conboy from Connecticut. Connecticut must be still camping down there. Um, Bernie, you're right, John. You did nothing. <laughs> help. <laughs> help, help. Uh, fantastic news. Don, horrible internet tonight. Here as much as possible. Oh, all right, bad on your uh, on your yeah, bad end. That's in Texas. Yeah, the, the Texas guy, Michael DePietro. Hello, how are you? Uh, uh, he said, Bob. He says hello to you, not to me. Uh, I wasn't going to, you know, insult you that way, but I, I I did pick up on that that the only person he said hello to was me. So right, all right. And right. Bernie says he's very excited to have Jim Roy on the show. Oh, oh wow. Jim Roy. Okay. That's interesting. He's, okay. He's got Sounds a northern cool. New England show. Well, I think we should I think we should bring up our guest because you know this is an exciting show tonight. We got two great products. And Michael. Oh, there you are. Say hello to fans in New England, Michael. How's everybody doing today? It's good to see you guys again. Yeah. So yeah, th and this week it works, Michael. So yeah, yeah that helps. <laughs> I told you it's bigger, bigger and better than ever. John, um, you like the lighting? Is my lighting better? Well, you're still ugly, but your lighting's better. Face for radio. <laughs> That's exactly, exactly, exactly. Right, uh, I know no. Chris has some obligations tonight. Your partner starting up the company, but tell our fans the crazy situation that got you in into the business. What, John? 
I have a confession to make. He, he does. He does this often, Mike. Uh, he, he, yeah, Michael. He just uh, interferes with people. What? I what? ate the Hershey bar. Ah. Well, as long as it makes you happy, that's what it was about, right? <laughs> We're going to talk about this in a minute, but I I did want to say I didn't want to fake like I'm going to uh, make some s'mores this weekend. I ate the damn Hershey bar, and it was I'm good. Sure. I'm sure a toasted marshmallow isn't ever just bad by itself. No, not at all. Not uh -huh. at all. So, Mike, um, well, you're Michael. We can't call you Mike. All right. Michael. Michael. Yeah, Mike's, Mike's coming on next with a, with a different product. But Bob this, asked you to um, tell a little bit about of the, one of the, the background greatest, here that we couldn't, couldn't find out about last week. Yeah. Tell us about your, your background. Yeah, this so I, I, was, uh, I was working – for a company uh, selling like a compactor for recycling purposes, smashing cardboard. And I was handling some national accounts and I was flying probably two, three weeks a month. Uh, Chris, my business partner, who unfortunately couldn't be here uh, this evening, he was uh, working tickets, selling tickets to like entertainment events, concerts, you know, sporting events, that kind of stuff. So really when the, pretty, pretty much. Uh, and yeah. so when the, when, when the pandemic hit, you know, both of our industries, because I sold mostly to restaurants, both of our industries kind of froze up. And so uh, we kind of formed a pod, as a lot of people were forced to do in the neighborhood. We were neighbors right across the street. We kind of knew each other on like a hey man level, you know, like, you know, the nod when you went out to get the mail, that kind of stuff. Hey man, but, how you doing, man? Exactly. So when uh, we were looking for something to do with the kids, you know, because the, 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 there was just the kids you couldn't go anywhere and do anything. So there was a lot of stuff to occupy them. And we found whenever we made a large bonfire in like a fire pit that Chris and I were stuck out there for a couple hours until the wood burnt all the way through. You know, the kids were there. They'd make their s'mores. They'd have their fun. And then, boom, they're gone. But the fire's got hours left. Not five minutes and they're out of there. Left you with all the ashes, right? Exactly. And so then we have to stay there and you have to keep the little kids because they're smaller kids in the group away from it, you know, because it gets hot. And so Chris and I just started, you know, kind of playing around. And, you know, essentially came up with this. It's a one pound, four inch uh, soy wax, you know, essentially a bonfire. You light these, it, the flame comes up about five, six inches off of it. So, and then whenever you want to stop, you can just put it out. And that's the, the convenience of it is what we underestimated as far as like people liking it. Because, you know, you, you can think about it. This is so small, you put it in your pocket. You can put it in a purse. You can carry a baby and have it in the back. You know what I mean? It's not overwhelming like a yeah. like a bundle of wood. Like a full you don't carry it onto an airplane. No, yeah. I wouldn't think so. Yeah, no. I, Diane sent me a video. It's only a minute long. Let's play that, and I want our fans to start thinking about all the places they can use it. And we'll we'll get back into some of those. Uh, Uses. Hey there, I'm City Bonfire, but you can call me CB. I'm CB, the world's first, the world's first personal, personal portable, and portable bonfire. bonfire. These are my, These are my super, super attractive, attractive dads. dads. Let me start that over again. Hey there, I'm City Bonfire, but you can call me CB. I'm the world's first personal and portable bonfire. These are my super attractive dads, Chris and Mike. They built me in their garage after they lost their jobs. And now we've started a family business together. And it's booming. I don't mean to brag, but I've been on the Today Show, Good Morning America, CNBC, and People Magazine. Don't worry, I haven't let it go to my head. My hobbies still include hanging out in the backyard with family and friends, chilling at the beach, going on camping trips, and of course, roasting s'mores. I love s'mores. As you can tell from my dating profile, I'm only four inches by two inches, but I make up for it with my big flame and five hour burn time. I'm from Maryland, but I visited every state across the country. I am available, so if you want to have some fun, hit me up on citybonfires.com and we'll call it a date. That's that's very very clever. Now, who's who's the clever part of this uh, duo here? Uh, well, Tiffany, Chris's wife, Tiffany, uh, is is doing a lot of stuff in the background, and, and we're just Chris and I are just the faces when it comes to that. You're she the, has you're, she. You're the, you're the pretty you're the pretty faces out to the crowds. I don't know if it's pretty, but I'm sorry to everybody that we're putting our faces out there in front of you. But it is now, sort of that was an absolutely excellent video. Thank you. But that guy's voice, he's the kind of guy that I think he got beat up on the playground in school. <laughs> he, got, 
You get punched in. You get punched at recess, right? You got beat up. They took it. They took him around the corner of the school building and punched him. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a tough new world in this the direct to sale market that we live in, and you've got to always stay fresh and keep new stuff up. You know that the the what people want to see is always changing. So we we have a little bit of fun with it. People seem to like it, so we make a little bit of uh, goofy videos, poke a little spoiler well, or something. And you know I what? Think, I think it's great. But what I'm curious about though, you went from high neighbor to a tremendous business you built in three or four months, you were incredibly successful and you continue to be and, and, and you probably haven't scratched the surface. So how, how did you get over that bridge from, do you want a beer or, you know, let's be business partners that choosing well, it, a business partner is tough in any situation. Um, you know, it kind of, a little bit of as a happenstance, you know, we were neighbors, we, we kind of came up with this idea, we thought it was really cool, kind of everybody we talked to thought it was cool. And because of the nature of the time we were living in, it nailed it as far as a gift. So people could send it to people and share an experience yeah. with those people. Um, and then also we found out some stuff like uh, some people aren't very comfortable with large fire pits, you know, the, the large flame is a little bit too much for them. So that this made it more manageable. Um, but we, you know, we bought a couple hundred. We made them. They sold. We bought a, you know, a thousand. We sold them. We bought twenty five hundred. We sold them. And so it was kind of, it was kind of like we we took very you know calculated steps forward. But at every step, the volume was greater than our step. And so, I mean, now we get stuff by truckloads. And it's made yeah. in the USA. Yes, sir. Right in Maryland. Yeah, we make yeah. them all in Rockville. I was making some this morning. You know, I I, yeah. I was putting the wicks in them this morning. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's us in those videos. It's a lot of our family in there. The kids are our kids, you know? Um, so it's, it's really oh. a, a family business. I will say that these are neatly packaged and, yeah. you know, you, you've got the main product itself here, but talk about the um, extending the extensions that you've done with this. For some reason it doesn't show up, but no, you know, the 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 background does that. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's, what you sent, that's what you sent us. Yeah, everything's in there. Even yeah. the, uh, yeah, even the holders, right. including the, the lighter. Holder. I, yep, including it's got the everything. Lighter. So, so what's nice about the the D 2 C market is is you know with Instagram and Facebook, we could get immediate feedback from people. So immediately once we started making it, you know, it came out like it was kind of like. Duh, you know, the s'mores make a lot of sense with it. And then, you know, we, we found someone to make the s'more skewers for us. And it, uh, it kept going. Something that we didn't plan on that was really cool is a lot of corporate clients have taken the center circle and put their logo there. We only keep the outside circle. So yep. it, it really, it, it's a nice, it's a nice something. If you want to put some branding on it, we I figured out a way to do that. And you hey, know what? Hey, There's Jim, Jim, Jim Roy, I see Jim says it's a cool idea, Mike. Um, Jim Thank owns you. Silver Moose Restorations up in uh, Monmouth, Maine. He in restores Maine. vintage airstreams. His is the skewer, collapsible skewer. I love, I love this thing. But uh, Jim, you could see that it's already a silver color. All you have to do is stick the moose in the middle of it, and then when visitors come to the shop, you can leave them with a uh, s'mores kit with the silver moose uh, backing on it. Yep. That, that's that that's exactly what we've done and we have it's 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 fairly easy all, all we need is one image file of the logo then we center it send you it as a proof and you know then it's it's a little bit of marketing on it for you yeah and and for our camper fans out there dante's on tonight frank is on when oh, i cool. first saw this and i talked to the there's a silver moose shirt yeah it's a great uh, logo yeah when i yeah it is it looked great that on would, the camera fit, fit nice on your on your um Definitely. But, yeah, definitely. but when we sat, first talked to Michael and, and Chris, I didn't uh, I didn't think of it as a campground item. It was something like the city dweller with the big condo in Boston that wanted to have yeah. s'mores, but he couldn't couldn't light a bonfire. But in talking to these guys, it makes perfect sense to what uh, Michael alluded to earlier. You're sitting around, the, you know. The, the the RV, you come back from the beach or something, and the kids say they want s'mores, and you're sitting there saying, man, I want to go to bed. So now you don't have to light a big fire. You pull this out, they can have their own individual s'mores and go to bed. And, and the beauty is you put the top back on because it burns for five hours, put the top back on, use it again tomorrow, tomorrow night and the next night, and you get five hours of burn time. I mean, that's brilliant. Now, yeah. For, legal, for legal purposes, we need to say, as it's printed clearly on the can, 
This is for outdoor purposes only. Do not try this in your RV. Correct. You you will have a bigger bonfire there than you care <laughs> to deal with, and it will take. Actually, it won't burn for five hours because those RVs go up. <laughs> they go up quick. But I, mean, um, I can see it, I can see every campground having it in the campground store. Right at the store. I can see dealers. Right at the register. Bernie, Bernie, I'll let. I won't. I won't uh, step on your toes, Bernie. But I think you should take one of these to Megan and have these printed up with the Campers in RV logo on them. Sure. And, and as, as a, the sales reps like yourself, he's one of their better sales reps up here in New England, um, you hand the customer their own little s'mores kit for happy camping, and it says Campers in on it, and they'll think of you forever and ever. What, what are some of the other corporate? I think you said Google and uh, Facebook uh, had done it too? We've had a bunch of people with Twitter. Uh, we just did some Salesforce, and then we have. There's been some casinos that have done it. Um, some of the, the uh, Anheuser Busch did some. I mean, we've been really lucky uh, or, or, or fortunate, however you look at it. We've been really fortunate that that our exposure has been great, and it's a really inexpensive but fun, convenient item. And so it goes well. It's a little bit different, you know, for the giveaways, you know, when people have giveaways and stuff, it's, it's a little bit, you're giving more of an experience than just a bottle or, you know, whatever other things. So we, we've had a lot of luck uh, with, with that aspect of the business. And then, you know, it's fun. So people put pictures of it being used on their Instagram and then their friends see it. Um, it was really cool. One thing we saw that was super cool during uh, the pandemic time was somewhere that this mother had or this family had set up on like a pond, like five, six different tables with a movie screen and every kid had their own little bonfire. So they were able to space everybody out and use it all. So, I mean, you know, it, it's just so small that people's creativity really can blossom. Have you Michael, what, do it for like, like weddings or bachelor parties or bachelor, they, they stick a picture of the bride and groom and have it as a handout there. We've done that. We've seen a couple wedding planners have like put them out to like kind of, you know, mock, mark off an area like on a beach or something like that and had a bunch of them. So, I mean, people who are a little bit artistic come up with a lot way more things to do with it than I would have thought of. Right. And if they ever do Talon Talladega Nights, too, <laughs> they can put the picture of the wife on here and say, here's my smoking wife. <laughs> or if you're not first, you're last, right? Isn't that the other part? <laughs> exactly. Something. Right. Now, and, Michael, and, when you were on wait, GMA wait, 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 in the Today get, Show, let in, me in get those Diana's. national shows, did you see a bump the next day? Uh, yeah. I sales? mean, anytime, anytime we get exposure, we're, we're seeing it. Uh, we, got, we got really lucky. A local radio station uh, picked it up and talked about it for a full segment. And we had happened to send a couple to them just – you know, with taking a shot. Um, but yeah, we, we've had really luck after any exposure at all of just people coming to the website and seeing it. Um, again, I think it's because it's convenient. It's something relatable. Everybody likes messing with s'mores and, you know, uh, and it's it's not expensive. You know, it's not a huge financial commitment. So two things. What is the website that people can order? I mean, you, you, you're you going direct on this, right? You're selling this direct. John, correct. John, look at the bottom. Look at the bottom of the screen, John. Okay, so let's tell people go to citybonfires.com. Um, yep. Approximate retail uh, in the in the twenty dollar range, uh, depending on customization, it can go up to like twenty four ninety five, uh, something like that. And then when you get into the packs, we have a, a s'mores night pack, and then we have a family pack, which is there you go. And then we came out with this year the citronella candle, which has been a, a really big hit. Um, it's also an outdoor candle, uh, but it, it helps you know deter the bugs a little bit. Okay, a wide variety of different different items. Um, as far as the future on this, um, you're just getting going. Um, we'll help you in the RV industry. Um, any it. other cottage interest industries that you see are opportunities for you down the road? Um, I really, I really think the camping and RV industry makes a lot of sense for people who are already going to be outdoors and are already looking to have a fire at night. You know what I mean? Uh, the convenience there seems to make a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, and, Diane, and Diane says, you know, it's an eco conscious product too. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Because it's made out of all natural products, the, the cans right. recyclable. So, I mean, that, that stuff's all, you know, hits, hits some notes as well. Yeah. RVers don't give a crap about that aspect of it, but it's nice to say. <laughs> 
See, Michael, I mean, see, see, our, see what our fans do? They apologize when they come in late to the program. So, Dante, are you back in Maine or are you still on the road with your brand new motorhome? So, look, let's 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 get some ideas from the fans. Oh, where where look, else? Look at, Jerry. Hmm? look at Jerry's thing here. Put put Jerry's thing. No, up. Get, Jerry's got an idea. The auto camp on Cape Cod allows fires, but only if there's no smoke. See, perfect market. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, there's there's just so much that we don't know about how it applies. Like, obviously, that makes sense. Oh, don't tell him that. Big, don't tell Jerry that. He'll get a big head. Oh, how definitely. can you have a fire with no smoke? Because there's an old saying where there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah. I think it's about the embers that it releases. Well, you the know. wood could be wet, you know, something like that. Do you have right. the uh, underwriter's laboratory seal of approval on this? Uh, I don't. Uh, we, we have <laughs> we have an ASTM certification. It's a different one. <laughs> okay. California, are, oh, are, California are, warning. All right, we got about we got about three more minutes. Um, what's the craziest use you've seen somebody have with it, Michael? We what, saw it's a family show, Michael. Yeah, yeah, ten four. The uh, there was someone <laughs> on a boat by Antarctica, and they put it on the edge of the boat and took a picture of it and just lit it a little bit. That was the one that kind of blew my mind. I mean, that, well, you know. That, it, that's now that's another great idea. You know, there's a lot of these companies that have people take. You know, LL Bean take they take the LL Bean pictures all around the world. Wherever they go, uh, you should have a contest you know, uh, where people use city bonfires. So, 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 what city is your bonfire going to be in? So, somebody will come from Boston, or you could have a contest cool. for the most. You know, and and post them up on your Twitter account or your website. To, you know, develop it. We got a, a brand new ice cream place down where I'm at in Florida, and she takes pictures of all the customers that come in. They and she's doing a whole wall of just instant pictures of of her customers and stuff but i can i can see people carrying this with them and uh you know what is it oh Stu leonard's down in connecticut the, they they actually do that people take the Stu leonard bags and and yep. you know on top of uh mount everest and wherever the hell you go yeah that's cool we had a contest where people made different recipe s'mores so not just your standard chocolate marshmallow and graham cracker uh, and some people came up. Some people even started making like savory ones, like salt. Can you make a ones. pizza on it? Uh, I don't know that I'd make a pizza on it. We did have some people in emergency situations in Virginia last year and Texas two years ago that were using them to boil water and stuff like that when when they went down for days. That was that's another unexpected use. Uh, you know, that wasn't part of our original intention, but it's nice to know that uh, you know if if stuff goes bad, that that it could help out. Yeah, I was only joking about the pizza, but I'm sure it's great oh. for making chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're right down in Maryland. You're right down in Maryland. And uh, hey, traffic? hey, we'll get you into Royal Farms. How's that? No, oh, that that would be spectacular. We'll yeah. get you into Royal Farms. Bob Zagami has never been to Royal Farms. Tell tell Zagami about Royal Farms. They have pretty good fried chicken. The best fried John, chicken. John says country. John says it's the best in the world. It's it's yeah. it, there's a lot of people that that agree with him. Yeah. Hey, let's give one away. Diane let's, says let's give one away. Do it. How are we going to do it, Bob? We got uh, a minute left. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so I'll figure it out. Yeah. Christopher, give me a number between one and ten. Uh, let's go with seven. Okay. So Bob, let's find the seventh comment, and then we'll send them down. The name of the winner. Perfect. One, two, three, four, five, six. And your winner is Bernie Culloden. How about that, Bernie? Bernie? Oh, Bernie. Bernie's an el he's an employee. He's not eligible. He's not eligible? No, he's not well, eligible. Yeah, but if we if we go back to the one before it, it's Jim Roy. And the one after it's Bert, this guy Bernie Culloden. Okay, give me another number. No, we'll, no, we'll give it to Bernie. No, <laughs> well, no, we'll send oh, Bernie another oh, one so he can oh. he can so go John, to the so, higher so up. So you got seven. So the number seven. Now you pick a multiplier, and we'll multiply it by seven and go to that one. Oh, you want me to pick it? Huh? You want me you, to pick it? Go ahead. I'll two. go with two. I don't want to. I don't want to make press anybody's math skills. Okay, so four teams, one. Yeah. So this was. Bernie, Bernie was, his first one was 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 
12, Bernie again. <laughs> Monica's 13, Bernie's 14. We're going to give it to Monica. Congratulations. Right. Monica. In fact, Monica's right. going to be at Bailey's. Maybe, you know, maybe I'll deliver it to her personally. If you, yeah. if you get, get me a couple of more, Michael. And I'll yeah, uh, and then you know what, Bob, you go in and talk. To him. I'll deliver it to her personally. Yeah, but you talk to Galen about put him in the store. Right, I can I can stop at Galen. I tell Galen to yep. come out. He's the owner, and we'll talk to him. And that's, this is uh, Bailey's family camping resort in Scarborough, Maine. How many sites they got, John? Seven hundred. Four hundred. Four hundred. Yeah, we're in a we're in a lot of like small like boutique style gift stores in like mountain towns and beaches. So I think that that would you know uh, this be... is this is natural. Not look at yeah. nothing says s'mores more than RVing. Nothing, right. nothing. And, and we're we got, out of time. We, wanna, we got we got we got Mike. We got Mike in the green room. Michael, thanks very much for joining us. And say hello to Chris and Tiffany. And you're you're doing a phenomenal job marketing this thing. And uh, we're going to do some work with you and we're going to get you out. We're going to make sure everybody in the RV and the campground Thank industry you knows who you guys are. Fair Thank enough. You so Great to meet you. you. Bye now. See you all. Okay. Let's go to all that right. break, Bob. Let's go to the commercial. Boom, 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 boom. One more time. Where is it? Okay. Go ahead, John. Hey, everybody. We want to thank our sponsor, Lee's Auto and RV Ranch in Ellington, Connecticut, for our sponsorship of the show. Hey, great dealership, friendly folks. They're real people. They're family owned. And they've got everything from new RVs to used RVs. And they've got trailers and something that no other dealership that I know of has. They also have a... Um, wide selection of pickup trucks so you can buy the whole rig there the truck and the um, uh, trailer and the best thing is that there'll be no mismatching for the size of the trailer that you have they'll get you the size of the truck that you need so stop and on down to lee's yeah. auto and rv ranch in and, Ellington, look, and diane, tell look. them bob and john sent you Right. And Diane, look in the lower left hand corner. They have little guy trailers, micro max, mini max, and maxes. And John, if, if you remember John Ratzenberger from Cheers, and John Ratzenberger is made in America, John is an RVer and he's actually going to be, you can't go, but he's going to be at the dealer open house uh, out in Elkhart, Elkhart. In, a, in a few. Couple week weeks. and a half or two weeks. So uh, if you look into your little micro maxes or little guy trailers, you can see them, the teardrop trailers right down there at Lee's Auto and RV Ranch in Ellington, Connecticut. So and with that being said, let's keep this show on fire because this is a pyrotech please. extraordinaire tonight. And Mike, how do you pronounce your last name? Uh, Bayrod is how we pronounce it. Um, Bayrod. Okay. I'm gonna call him Mike. And you are the that works. The, you are the inventor of a very unique product. I mean, this this is a, an amazing product. I don't know. If you, it's not a little product. But before we uh, get into the conversation, let me show a little bit of. I think this this video for its shortness. Shows everything, correct me if I'm wrong, but it shows everything you need to know about pull, start, fire. And you'll oh, never want sure. to start, you know, you'll never want to start a fire another way. Let's let it go. And that's it. Just like that. Yep. Just like let's 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 make sure they see it again. So yeah, you loop that green string over a log, that'll secure product in place, build your structure of logs. Then when you're ready, you just pull the string and that's it. No tinder, no kindling, no matches, no lighters. We've tried wet, freshly cut, hardwood, frozen logs. Doesn't matter what they look like. It's a perfect fire every time. That's amazing. Now, 
you've got an engineering pack background. This isn't your first company. So I think it might be fair to call you a serial entrepreneur, but how the hell did you get into this? Tell us that little story about how you, how you figured sure. this one. It, it's the classic, you know, uh, see a need, fill a need. Um, but me and three or four other engineers uh, were stuck in a negative 22 degree snowstorm out in West Virginia. Uh, snowshoe. And I mean, it was so bad. Our antifreeze froze. Wait, yeah. West Virginia oh. gets down, West Virginia gets down to 22 below. Out in snowshoe uh, oh. on the worst days. <laughs> and oh. uh, yeah, our antifreeze froze and we were, we were real stuck and we had all the cool fire starting materials with us. Um, but we just couldn't get a fire going. And one of us said, look, it's 2015. We should be able to push a button and start a fire. And he started talking about uh, an app on your phone, but that's just not how fire works yet. So we went home and started working um, on what's now known as pull start fire. Okay. So you have to tell us the active ingredients, Mike, whom we just lost. You just lost. There you go. You're back. Okay. Mike, tell, tell us what's in this because, um, sure. you know, unless it's super patented that nobody can uh, find <laughs> out. No, I'd love to. Um, so, we get this question all the time, you know, as really the question comes from why is it burning so hot? How is it burning so hot? Um, and how does it do what it does? Um, from the, how does it do what it does standpoint? It's kind of the classic Flint meat spark love story, but everything is micro sized and brought down to a, um, a fraction of what, what you'd normally see. So when you pull a string, tiny spark meets tiny Flint starter kind of thing. Um, and then it's a little bit of a chain reaction. One starts, the next starts, the next. Um, and all that happens within the span of um, three to five seconds. And then you've got flames coming out all six sides. Um, and really what's burning for that 30 to 40 minute burn time is a sanding dust and wax mixture. And the sanding dust rather than sawdust is a much finer particle size and much lower moisture content. And kind of like, dust. yeah. Kind of like crushing up ice before you put it in your drink makes it colder faster. It's working the same way with heat. So um, that's how we're able to get that much hotter burn um, for that long. Wow. Well, I'm so, I, am, I am sure glad Swenson finally showed up because we got the engineer on. This is our resident engineer. who uh, Awesome. Again, but again, see how they do that? They apologize for being late. So welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome to another engineer who has invented this incredible product. How do people get this product? Uh, so it's pullstartfire.com is the best way. Um, you can find it on Amazon. We've got a ton of great reviews there. We've, um, we're in places like Stick, uh, Dick Sporting Goods, the Paper Store. Um, those are some of our uh, favorites. We've got uh, lots of little distributors um, like your Ace Hardware's, uh, we're in a ton of campgrounds. Uh, we really started this product in the campground industry. Uh, the thought behind it is the time around the bonfire is the number one uh, experience that a, cam a family is looking for when they go camping. So if you can protect that experience, especially with the millennials, uh, myself included, who are camping these days, who maybe their fire starting abilities aren't what they, what they used to be, um, well, Ryan, for, Ryan, for families Ryan camping. has no trouble. He just puts a half a gallon of uh, Kingsford charcoal lighter in there, which, <laughs> which, which really makes your hamburgers taste great. Yeah, but he has his kid light it. Huh? Oh, man. He has he, his kid he, light he, the charcoal. Yeah. Walter, but, did you – I, I got a question for Walter, though. Walter, did sure. you see the video that we opened up with for uh, Mike's section? It's, it's only about 30 seconds, not even 30 seconds. Uh, seems pretty cool. Actually, chemical engineering from BU as well as electrical. Oh, now he's bragging. <laughs> Walter, Walter, you realize who else went to BU, don't you? Who's Bobby that? Orr. AOC went to BU. Yeah. Okay. So, so you be careful I'll how play you play that over again. So Walter, can you let me let me uh, jump over to the video. Play that over again. Play yeah. it for Walter because we have great respect for Walter's engineering expertise yep so you just loop that green string over a log that'll secure it in place throw your logs in a pile no tinder no kindling just pull the red string 
and that's it. It'll burn 30 to 40 minutes on its own, long enough and hot enough. We've tried wet, freshly cut, hardwood, frozen logs. This is crazy. Now, I assume that string just makes sure that it doesn't go floating around someplace else. Right. right. Yep. Did it come out first without the string? It did. And uh, if you had to like wedge it in between logs and uh, I told my wife, I said, you, you got to pull it straight out. You can't pull the string at an angle. And she showed her family and she pulled the string straight up and it all just kind of fell apart. And I said, you, you got to pull it straight out. She said, that's dumb. You need to fix that. Um, we're probably on iteration number 130 something. Um, we just keep fine tuning. How long has it been out, Mike? Uh, that snowboarding trip was in 2015. And then in that um, spring, summer, I had graduated, got a job, moved out, got married. So I had some things going on there. And then in the following uh, couple years, we worked through the development. And I'd say it really started to go to market uh, end of 2018, early 2019. Interesting. About three years. Uh, yeah. Is it enough to make a living on? Yeah. I mean, we're really enjoying um you know, Pulsar Fire and all that it's been able to do for us. And we're really looking forward to the future. Um, and it's it's just the, the love and the feedback that you get from uh, people who use it. I mean, that goes that goes a long way uh, in what Who's Pulsar Fire does for us. This is serious engineering stuff. And I was looking at your uh, LinkedIn background. So you either worked for NASA or you did some projects for NASA. Where, where did that fit into your engineering career? Uh, so in college, I had found a, a prof well, he's an engineer at Langley in Virginia, and his name was Dr. Peter Parker. Um, and I said, hey, I got to work for you one day. And all through college, we kept in communication. He told me what classes to take. So when I graduated, um, I went and did an internship there at Langley. Um, and man, I the second day I was there, I was just it was not what I wanted to do forever. Um, it was really hard to work with who you wanted to work with. Um, there was a lot of red tape. Um, but for the time that I was there, I got to work on a really lot of cool things um, and grow that kind of statistical engineering side of me. Interesting. Now, this is all made in America, right? Uh, that's where we started. Um, and we're, we're back and forth between trying to make it work here and making it work where we have to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And oh, they can buy it on the website. Um, yeah. How about, you said you, you have done campgrounds, so do you have a lot of campgrounds? Oh, yeah. Um, I think that's, that's an area where we can help you with uh, uh, a lot of our fans and uh, people in the yeah. campground industry. The campground is probably the, the place that makes the most sense for this product. We see campgrounds that go through eight cases a month um, of pull start fire. They, it just makes so much sense really anywhere that sells firewood. So we're doing a lot in the convenience store space um, and uh, the hardware store space, really anywhere that's selling firewood. This product it, just makes a lot of a, sense. Um, what about single use what about product? Like, like, yep. that single use product. Yep. And it's funny that the number one review we get, um, I start to kind of categorize them and see what people like about the product and uh, the number one review we get is I will never start a fire another way. So you'll see lots of people, they'll buy one uh, while they're at a campground and they'll buy five, 10 on the way out um, as they're headed to their next place. You got a 12 wow. pack, right? We do. We've got a, a, a three pack online as well as a six, nine, 12 and 30 pack. What about places like L.L. Bean or REI? Because like yourself, there's, there's so many people hiking these days just for good sure. health. John and I are not two of them. But <laughs> we, we was, although Swenson's been doing some bicycling and uh, hiking, but okay. have you been able to get into L.L. Bean or KOA? Yeah, so um, we're in a ton of KOAs. Um, we'll go to their show again here in the in November. Oh, you are going. Um, okay. You are there. Okay. Oh, yeah. A uh, ton of KOAs. There are a lot of them. They're mostly independently owned um, right. or operated. And then, uh, yeah, stores like REI, um, we're figuring out kind of the warehousing logistics of this product. Uh, but we were the, in the local REI and we couldn't keep them on the shelf. Um, 
So yeah, there's a lot of love for the product and we're just on the tail end of getting through some inventory challenges. Um, just being able to keep up with the demand and uh, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to, to what the future holds. Mike, anybody who's watching us from a business perspective, what's the markup on these? Cause it looks like they retail for about 20 bucks. Uh, so that's for the three pack. Um, the singles, oh. they go for, oh. yeah, the singles go for about four or five bucks. You'll find them at a, Oh, um, four or five, six okay. bucks at a, at a campground or in the okay. store. So yeah. I own a campground. What's my markup on these? Yeah. Campground will probably pay two eighty, and then they'll sell them for four ninety nine. Okay. It's pretty so typical. Okay. What the hell is, what the hell is Jerry plant mean with Spider-Man? <laughs> Dr. Uh, Peter Parker was my, uh, well, Peter my Par oh, oh, okay. yeah, the mentor okay. at, uh, yeah, probably too old to, to be swinging around on ropes, but <laughs> Oh, yeah. webs. Bernie Bernie Collison's perfect for the Shark Tank. Now you gotta, oh, give man. Much, you gotta give up too much of your company. <laughs> well, it's funny. We we auditioned way way back when, and uh, I flew all the way up to Maine, and I stood in the whole line and did the whole thing. And they said, "Okay, you got thirty seconds." And at this point, we were so young as a company. I was in my little sister's playhouse um, that I negotiated with her for a. Uh, a gallon of ice cream and I'd take her out to the movies and I got to use her, her uh, four foot by six foot playhouse for about a year and a half. But then and... you burned it. <laughs> no. Um, but anyway, so we were still in there and I was hand painting these strings red because I couldn't find red twine. Um, and there's a big sign that said no prototypes, like no samples. And that was kind of my whole thing. So I went up and I put it on her desk. I said, if you pull that string, it starts a fire. She said, great, get it off my desk. Next. And I said, I flew all the way up to Maine for that. Um, and then they had another audition in Raleigh the year after. And by then I was a little more polished. So I went to that one. I gave my best spiel um, with the world's easiest instructions emblazed on the package as the product name, pull, start, fire. You know, I did the whole, the whole thing. And she said, great, we'll call you. And I said, that's it. She said, we'll call you if we like it. Okay, and then it was... Yeah. Six months later and six months later, but they eventually said, you know, we'd love to have you on the show. But that was about a year and a half into us being a company. And we said, you know, we just can't at this time. Too late. Hey, we got we to gotta talk some serious business. Walter is part of a group that has Halo's Wish. Um, they kind of like make a wish, but it's for the local families and campgrounds. And they do a big fundraiser every year in September at sure. Normandy Farms Campground. Have you ever heard of Normandy Farms Campground? Yeah, I want to say, shooting from the hip, that we are there at Normandy Farms Campground. Um, we can we can, we can, can check with uh, the family, sure. Daniel's family, but he's got a, a this fundraiser where they're going to have 150 members. They used to be the Good Sam chapters for the New England area, but they're going to have 150 sure. families. And we have an RV display there. So several of my dealers display RVs and we open up, he opens up the display to the other 250 sites. So there's 450 yeah. sites down there. So what yeah. he's asking for is either that you might donate some or could he buy some and get them in time? Cause it's next. No, it's uh, the seven, 17th, the yeah. next 16th, week, 17th, week September, from 17th, tomorrow. 17th. next uh, weekend. Next weekend. Yeah. yeah. yeah hey, Walter, weekend. if you want to shoot us an email, um, yeah, I'd love to connect with you and see what we can do to help you guys. Um, I'm going to put your email address up right now. Yeah. Team at pullstartfire.com is a great one. What is it? You want uh, team? team? Yep. That's a good one. Yeah. We love supporting, you know, the outdoors and uh, just anything that's going on like that. And if we know anything about Walter at all, You'll have the email before the show is over. But he <laughs> That's runs, perfect. He, him and Jason Cole and Joe Cabosa, Frank Polange, they run this charity. It's absolutely phenomenal. But they could uh, they could have them on display and sell some of them, raise some money uh, at the RV exhibit. I'm sure that's kind of what he's thinking about. But they uh, So they have 150 of the sites, but they open it up to everybody else down there. And we can, we can check and see if... Uh, you have them because that's the best, probably the, one of the best campgrounds east of the Mississippi, certainly the best in the northeast. Well, and it's not that we're saying it. It's been judged, you know, one of the top eight 
Yeah, yeah they're always, you know, whether it's USA camp. Today or Travel Leisure or somebody, anytime yeah. you do a luxury campground, uh, they're up in the top 10, top five. They've been number That's one awesome. a couple of times. Uh, Stell says these would be great for giveaways at RV rallies. Yeah, that's that's another good application for it. Diane says it worked for my clients, but they were just starting out, not right for everyone. That's what about Shark true? Tank. Yeah. <laughs> Diane's another one with side conversations going on. And Mike, Diane says, can Mike give away a pack, get a, a, a pack away? You know, uh, Michael, you know it. on the first section, do you want to give away a pack? Oh, yeah. A, a three pack? You know it. All right. Um, let's see how, what do we do? We got to do something. Or we different. can take the three pack and divide it amongst three winners. Well, then you could just donate three single ones and then you don't have to open the box. Right. But, Mike, do you ship? Ship individual ones or three. We like only? to just the, the three packs. Fine, we can ship okay. a, a couple three packs out. Okay, a couple. Three okay, packs. so Mike, what what is your birthday, Mike? Uh, March third. Okay, so wh whoever posts the closest between now and the end of the show, we only got a oh, we got about eight minutes left. Whoever posts their birthday that's closest to March third will get the three pack. <laughs> Okay, but that's the show government ID. Is that, is that too complicated for you to be drunk? <laughs> no, but I'm a crook, and I know that I would post post that date. Watch second. <laughs> unless you had a way to verify it. Our, our fans do not lie. What, what Phil <laughs> Tell says, John shipping those is three John packs. shipping these three packs? No, Mike's going to ship them. Oh, yeah, so, I got you. Okay, now Michael DePietro, who is... He is the better looking brother of the two DePietro brothers. Uh, his birthday is February 2nd. Jim Convoy's January 1. We don't care what year you were born, Jim. Jerry <laughs> Clance, April 10th. No, no three pack. Who says no three? Michael DePietro. No. No, that was Diane. Diane Max, oh, no, three pack. Okay. All right. So that will we will do that. Um, 123 April Fools. Diane, you're not eligible. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> if yeah, I mean, if Diane was it. at a TV show in the control yeah. room talking to the producer like she's talking to us, they would have thrown her out of that studio long <laughs> ago. So, how long have you guys been doing this? Um, Six and a half years. Every Wednesday. Awesome. Every Every it's Wednesday, Wednesday except, first, you know. except for last Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> one except show for that like, last one. One show out of three hundred didn't go. <laughs> oh, that's all right. That's not a that's not a bad percentage. It's no, not. It, it, and I don't I don't know if you heard it at the very beginning. I think it came on a little bit later into the green room, but it was it was self inflicted. It was totally one hundred percent my fault. I screwed up and forgot. I did a couple of things in reverse order, so I took I take full responsibility. That's all right. These things happen. Don't don't beat yourself up. <laughs> so, Mike, uh, who where was... do you go from? Where do you go from here? You know, serial entrepreneurs get get itchy and they want to get on to the next best thing. Can you can you expand this product line at all, or where do you see it going? Yeah, I think so. There's a lot of fun things that I think we have ideas for, but right now we're really focused on um, bringing Pull Start Fire to you know to the world to uh, to everyone who wants one. Um, well, so nice getting into all the right. That's a nice way of saying it's none of your business, Bob. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Come on. Well, you'll be the first to know, okay? How about that? <laughs> all right. Um, let's see. I don't see any. All right. Well, I'll, I'll pick it out after. The, I'll go through all of them to make sure that I don't miss anything. But I will sure. let you know. Like, uh, So our folks will start. And I'm sure by now, if you'll check your email, you probably got something from Walter, but as we get other ideas, we're, we're going to stay in touch with you and, and we want to help you out as much as we can. I think it's a, it's, I think it's a phenomenal product. Uh, yeah. It's funny. It's, it really takes the chore out of starting any fire, whether the logs again, are. we held some underwater um, for five hours. We threw them out in a hurricane, let it just pour on them and then went out still no tinder, no kindling. Um, there's a wet logs test video out there and yeah. it's just phenomenal. Um, you'll never need Tinder, never need kindling, and you just pull the string, and it's just a it's a happy camper guarantee, is what we tell the campgrounds. Yeah, I, I, John, can't you picture Walter Swenson doing a demo of this down at Normandy Farms? 
gathering everybody around and, you know, Walter in the middle, pulling the string and doing the demo. <laughs> yeah, and, and forgetting to tie the string around another piece of wood and blowing Jason Cole's head off. <laughs> but you know what? That would probably be good because we'd get publicity out of it. And then he'll probably probably tie it around Donna's to big toe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but if he blew a person up, it would be good, and then you just track it back to user error. But you yeah. get a lot of publicity out of it. Sure, you would. Yeah, you probably make so, the eleven o'clock news. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Mike, we want to thank you so much for being with us. I know that you've got many, many things to do. And you know what? America needs entrepreneurs. We need people um, like you. So don't, you know what? And I know that you're, you probably have several other ideas that are brewing in your mind right now. So it's, it's a gift that you've got. And you know what? It, it's, it's just so cool or warm, I should say. But <laughs> it's so cool that you were able to bring something like this to market because I know, you know, you buy those little um, fire starters at at the camp store or Ocean State Job Lot or whatever, and it shows 10 of them, and you have to use about seven of them right. to get the thing going because they burn out so quickly. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, I think your case. Yeah. I think, totally I think, yeah, I think we all recognize the struggle of, you know, whether it's that thing that won't stay lit, those logs that just won't light, there's no tinder around, no kindling. Um, it's just it's just a perfect fire solution every time. Well, you're right. There yep. was those little there's those little white ones, and and every time I started a fire with those, I must have used ten of them because between the kindling. <laughs> now the real question is: Have you been back to West Virginia in minus twenty two degree weather and doing it? No, I have not. Not sure I will. No. Oh, to go back to, to you, build one? Did you listen to the forecast uh, before you went? <laughs> I think it was just a free weekend, and I don't even think we looked. I think we uh, just went. Uh, there's nothing that <laughs> says engineers and common sense. You know, they think out of the box. <laughs> hey. so people think out of the box. Hey, but yeah. we also should say, and I'm presuming, Mike, that these are for outdoor use only. Do not try this in your home fireplace, right? Uh, we're doing some testing with a third party to, um, to give that stamp, uh, for indoor use. And so far everything's looking good. So, um, okay. well. it's got a, it's got a little three to five second smoke timer when you pull the string to let you know the product's gone off. Um, and so you'll get a little bit of smoke pooling around the product and then the flame comes and it goes up the flue. So if you've got an open flue, maybe you close the doors, but, um, yeah, we'd love to just have that real stamp of approval from the third party. Interesting. Great. Mike, I want to thank you very much for taking the time and coming back on this week and letting us complete yeah. the show and uh, show <laughs> off Pool Start Fire. I think you're really on to something, and uh, we'll be staying in touch with you. I appreciate it. We'll, we'll stay in touch, too. All right. Take Great. care. Thanks, Thanks guys. Have a good one. Yep. So, Bob, that just about wraps up a show. Uh, you yep. know, when you do two guests, the time goes by so quickly. It does. And, um, you know, we, th we theme this show, and we haven't done that in uh, in how many years we've been doing this show. But um, you know what, ladies and gentlemen, if you can think of other themes that you want where we'll go out and, you, you know, you guys write to us. Just tell us either right here or down below in the YouTube, um, in the YouTube yeah, let, comments. Well, let us know us, let us if you like it, if you, if you like this, this particular show and having two guests and to John's point, uh, if you like the format, then we can look at the different themes and having some of the other uh, exciting guests. And, and certainly we want to try to get as many as we can that make it in the good old USA and uh, hire people. I know one thing that Michael didn't say on the uh, city bonfires is they've been able to hire because they both had gotten laid off in the uh, COVID environment that they have hired many other people who got laid off and then now part of City Bonfires, along with some of the family members. So congratulations to City Bonfires and Pull Start Fire. Well, now, look at this. We've got um, pets in parks for a show. And that's a very interesting show because there are some pets that shouldn't be in parks. And, um, you know, thank you, Alyssa. That is, uh, I think it's Mike's wife who, who put that in. Uh, all yeah, electric yeah, RVs at some time, point. I what, think that, what time are you at, John? I'm at uh, 801. 
801. So we're over. No, no, no. But, I mean, you were reading, so I wanted to get back to where you were reading. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, at 8 o'clock, Alyssa, way down below. Oh, just oh, on there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mike's wife. So yeah. A supported okay. wife, supportive wife, as she said before. <laughs> and um, whatever. Alyssa, it's hard to support an entrepreneur, but um, it looks like you've got um, a little bit of, a little bit of heat in the house right now. So with that, we should sign off. Thank you so yeah, much. We, 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 we thank you very much for those under, under consideration. We, let me and uh, let you know that this time next week, actually, Bob, we will contribute because we will send them some. We're going content. to send some videos, right? Couple yeah. interviews of of manufacturers that we'll do on Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday, and then Bernie will run it. And Bernie, it's all yours next week. Yep. So and, we're going to run uh, the uh, closing commercial, and uh, we'll be out of here with the theme song. Thanks very much for joining us tonight. Hey, John? Lee's Auto and RV Ranch, Ellington, Connecticut. Ellington, Connecticut. If you're wondering where it is, it's halfway between, just about halfway between. I-91 and I-84 in Connecticut, just a little bit northeast of Hartford. So it's really convenient for anywhere in New England. Um, check out their website at leesautoandrv.com, and they'll have their inventory on it. And they've got a couple of new Class B units down there that you're really going to like. So with that being said, this is John DePietro along with Bob Zagami saying so long for... This edition of RVing in New England was a presentation of the New England RV Dealers Association. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.